What's going on, everybody? Brian Mann here, hands-on auto training. End of day, October 29th, 2021. Guys, it was an interesting day. The last job of the day was really interesting. It was a 2015 Chevy Spark, I think they call it, a real tiny car. Uh, it had a transmission problem. Long story there. Actually, it's a pretty funny story. So we'll get that at the end of the video. Uh, be sure to stay tuned. First off, I want to remind everybody, we'll be giving away a U-Scope next Friday uh, for core and premium members. If you're a core premium member of handsonautotraining.com, you'll be entered in with a drawing of this awesome little tool. The premium member meeting will be next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be building a little injector driver kit, uh, something we can work with together. You're going to need to make sure you have yourself a breadboard. You're going to have to have a 555 timer. You're going to need a 222A transistor. Uh, you're going to need a 47 microfarad capacitor, a 100 nanofarad capacitor. Uh, an assortment of resistors would be ideal, but you're going to need at least uh, two or three uh, 1,000 ohm, 10,000 ohm, and 100,000 ohm resistors would probably do. And a couple of LEDs will get us started. Also, uh, later on, we're going to add this MOSFET module uh, to the project. This, and don't forget, lots of jumper wires, the more the merrier. You, you can never really go wrong with that. There's multiple kits you can get like this, which kind of work, or just get some uh, hookup wire. Or you can get some ribbon cable and, uh, with the uh, male to male ends and you'll be all set. These electrical components are listed in the description of this video. If you're interested in that stuff, be sure to check it out. Let's get started with today. All right, we're back with this 12 Express. I'm gonna do this again here. This is the uh, new used computer we're putting back in there. So when that starts programming, I'll show you what uh, what's going on here. We've got the new used one here and there is a uh, line that has been run. We're gonna run a line outside of it back to that coil. I'm waiting for this to, there we go, started there. So you see we've got the, uh, the coil down here uh, that is more of a negation module slash coil. It's got uh, this wire here. This is a connector for it. Uh, there is a, I believe there's a power, a ground, and a ground that just runs to connect ground between the ECM and this uh, coil assembly. And then there's individual uh, coil controls. Makes for easy access when you got the seat out. This is awesome. Love it. So there you get a look of uh, how that coil is on this 4.3. Here's the thing, that Chevy Express started up and ran fine, no problems with that overlaid wire, the used computer, and a coil. Uh, my big question or challenge is, is I didn't want to risk uh, burning up another coil if the computer was going bad at times or vice versa. Kind of like on those Ford 3 liters, you always see that. Sometimes I get called out to program a computer and uh, the, let's see, they replace a coil and the bad original computer takes out the new coil, then they put in a new computer in, and then the coil takes out the computer. I've seen that happen before uh, too many times. So I'm hoping that uh, this vehicle should be all set. I can't imagine anything else going on with it, but I'll keep you guys posted if it ends up coming back. Next up, we had a 2016 Honda uh, Odyssey. This was that transmission update for the shutter. There was no problems there. Everything was all good. After that, we had ourselves a 2011 Buick Regal with some worn out keys. So we got the uh, Triton out, went ahead and programmed those, no problem. After that was this Chevy Spark. Having some issues with this 15 Chevy Spark. We got this transmission VSS signal. Um, there's two VSS signals. I'm trying to figure out why the service information doesn't match what we have on a vehicle diagram. But you see here, we've got some uh, speed going and we're not going nowhere. And this here is the vehicle speed uh, sensor signal. Not the engine speed, this is vehicle speed. So as I rev this thing up, you can see that's going there. This is the transmission control module down here on the floor. Now what was really interesting is during my pre-scan of this vehicle, uh, the instrument cluster and the transmission control module had no communication. Now it was like the Ghostbuster sign, no communication, or I, I don't know how to put it, it said invalid response received. So. Very interesting what was going on here. I may not believe it, but uh, you can actually unplug this sensor, get the light shade on, and swap it with the other sensor, and that's what was going on with this thing. What was challenging with this vehicle is the uh, flow charts for the trouble codes we were getting 
and the service information and the wiring diagrams all name these components different things. There's a uh, vehicle speed sensor, then they call it a transmission speed sensor, which I guess would be your uh, output speed. Uh, very interesting how that works, and they have the input speed sensor. So there's three sensors, and usually we're used to having turbine speed and output speed and vehicle speed. And this one was, in some documents, was called primary speed pulley and secondary speed pulley. So interesting stuff. So this was just interesting because these two sensors were actually plugged in opposite each other. Uh, the plugs are identical between them. So very easy mistake to make, but it was an easy fix for that one. So you guys have a great day. I appreciate everybody watching. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.